Okay, it's 7 p.m. on Monday in the UK, so it's time for another Mastering Life Shorts. Uh, this is webinar 27. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Robert Keegan, who he's a psychologist uh, professor at Harvard. In 1994, he came up with this theory of adult development, which I heard about first a few months back. And over time, it's been one of those theories that keeps coming back as really explaining a few things about myself and about other people uh, and has been really useful. It's also one of those uh, experiences that, that when I first said that I was going to do this this um, webinar, I thought, yeah, I can explain that theory. And it's another one that really teaches you that, that in order to understand something enough to tell other people about it, you really have to dig in deep. Um, so on the surface, it's quite easy to understand. Uh, on, on another level, it, it, there's many, many layers to this theory. It's quite a big theory. So today, what I'm going to be doing is literally just laying the theory out in front of you. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how we can use the theory in our lives, uh, both to help ourselves to grow and also uh, to understand those around us. <clears throat> So where does it all start? It starts from the fact that uh, humans and, and most people are very happy to understand that people grow. Uh, and we start off as babies and we become children and then uh, teenagers and then adults. And in physical ways, we have some changes in, in adulthood. I've got a few more gray hairs than I had when I first uh, ended puberty. However, generally, it's accepted that the, 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 the major changes have finished at the end of puberty. And most psychologists assumed that there was a theory of development of children and the understanding of the mental models in children. However, what Keegan has suggested is that our development as adults does not stop at puberty. So he has suggested this uh, model of five different stages of development of human beings. The first stage uh, is when you're a baby. The second stage is when you're a child. The st third stage you enter during puberty and then many adults are still in stage three. Stage four, only about 35% of people get to stage four uh, and that tends to happen about middle age. And then later on in life, some people, 1% of people get to stage five in this theory. So I'm going to be looking at this. One of the important things to recognize is that just like you can't make a baby into a child quicker, sometimes it's impossible to grow up these stages uh, faster. And actually, if you're trying, you're missing the whole point of the theory. So let's get, let's get down to it. Now, the theory is, the, the, there's a the core idea in the theory of the subject and the object. So if we go to English grammar, uh, and we have a sentence like the man throws the ball, the verb is the doing word throw. Man is the subject It's the person who's doing or the thing that's doing the, the verb. So that's the man and the ball is the object. So the, the subject does something to the object. In the first theory, uh, first stage of Keegan's theory, babies are just a bundle of impulses. And this bundle of impulses exists in order to grow and become a child and therefore later uh, an adult human being who is able to reproduce and do everything else that adults are supposed to be able to do. That bundle of impulses has temporary movement and sensations. So it can move towards, uh, for example, a mother's breast. It can hold your finger when you when you put your hand inside it. It's not thinking. It's got no idea of socialized mind. It's just following these impulses. Now, after a while, the baby becomes a child. Um, when you've got a child, you enter what's known as the impulsive mind. A child is more fully formed than a baby. They have their own self-concept. They know that they exist. They have needs. They are their needs. So they are hungry. And it's English. In interesting in the English language, I say, I am hungry. Whereas in German, I, they say, I have hunger. So in, in English, we're actually <laughs> stuck in stage two and saying, I am hunger. 
um, they have simple reciprocity. And what that means is that they understand that if they um, want something, there's a cost or a benefit uh, to get every benefit. So for example, when they shout, their parent will respond in, in good ways or bad ways, and they'll learn from that. Um, if they ask for something or point at something, something else will happen. To be able to do that, they have to have separated out the idea of perception that, that they can see what's going on around them. They've they've starting to move their impulses out. So a baby with a, a mother's breast in front of them will just start suckling. After a while, uh, the child can start not going straight to something. They'll start being able to decide if they. Uh, follow those impulses or not and if you've ever seen the the classic marshmallow experiment where there's a child and it's given a marshmallow and they're, they're told if you wait five minutes I'll give you two you can see that child trying to hold back the impulse to grab the marshmallow and eat it and some do and some don't um, they also have social perception and what, what we mean by that is that they are able to spot other people and understand that other people are part of the world they inhabit and there's a sort of cost and benefit and a cause and effect that involves other people. However, they don't really have a theory of other people's minds. In this stage, uh, for example, and actually 6% of adults are still in this stage, someone would say, you, you could ask a person, why didn't you steal that car? And someone in this stage would say, I didn't steal that car because I might get caught or because I might be punished. It's not because I think it's inherently wrong or because I can think of what the other person, the owner of the car would be thinking. By the time most people get to teenage years, they start to move into stage three, which is the socialized mind stage. And the socialized mind is, as it says on the tin, all about social interactions. It's about living with other people as human beings. 58% of the adult population are in stage three and will always be in stage three. In stage three, we are sponges to the, uh, the, the surrounding society and the, what the society around us thinks. We are very focused on other people and what they want and they expect of us. So in teenagers, you have teenagers who want the latest trainers because everyone else has them, or they don't want to have that haircut because they'll look stupid, or they don't want to do their homework too well because they don't want to be swatty. You have um, religions that tell you how you're going to behave and all the rest of it and tell you how to what, what values are important. Um, you have teams and, and groups of, of people who um, have a particular mindset, a groupthink, a mentality that goes together and they all have to think in a certain way. And you see this in political uh, marches and things. And then even those people who are sort, sort of all, all transcended, uh, and they might find people who've got a similar philosophy and they live in that philosophy. So, for example, um, uh, uh, the people might think I, I want to be uh, different from society and then they all go and find other people who are different from society and they're still actually stuck in stage three because they're trying to find people around them who are just like them. Now in stage three you are a set of generalizations. You can say, this is who I am. I have a load of labels. I can say I am my ideals and my values. I, I am, I have this deep inside of me that is caring or I, I love freedom. Um, and all of these come from the outside. So uh, a good example of this would be in healthcare systems. In Europe, it's really difficult looking at America in understanding why anyone could think that it is a bad thing for everyone to have socialized healthcare in America. But that's because the society that we live in expects that of us. And therefore we have that built up in us. We've sucked that in from the, from the society that we're in, that healthcare is, is a human right. In America, there are certain places where it's exactly the opposite. It's healthcare is your problem and your problem alone. And it's up to you to solve your own problems. And that, that feeling comes from the society and the person ha has internalized that view. Self-consciousness starts to develop in this, and that's why teenagers, when they first get into this, become very self-conscious. 
um, they have a point of view, they have their, their place, they have a disposition where they're going, uh, they have needs, but they're temporary, and they have preferences. I remember my stepdaughter for a long time would go through a pink phase and then decided that she was going through a green phase. What's important here is all of that, all of the things you have can change and it's fine. So she didn't see there was any contradiction in, in loving pink and then loving green or loving yogurt and then hating it and loving bro broccoli and then hating it. All of it was just, well, that was what I wanted last year. And that's fine. If, if you're in stage three, you can change certain things, but you wouldn't change your values very, sim very quickly. Now, societies have grown up to keep us in stage three. Um, Keegan gives the uh, analogy of riding an automatic car versus a manual car. In both a manual and an automatic car, someone is ch the, the, the gears are being changed. However, in an automatic car, you don't notice them being changed. They're changing in the background and you don't know when or why. In a manual car, you have to do it for yourself. In a society that's a very focused stage three society, and we're talking the heavily religious societies or even a very secular society with lots and lots of rules, uh, like China potentially, um, those, those societies say, if this happens, then you do this. This is how, what you have to think. This is how you have to feel. And if you think or feel anything different than that, then you're wrong and we'll reintegrate you. I saw a letter just yesterday on Facebook from a religious, uh, from a church in Tennessee to someone saying, uh, we have found out that you are living in, in a way that is not biblical. This has to stop immediately or you will be excommunicated. So moving from level three to level four means you're moving yourself away from that grip of a society that's told you what to do. But it needs you to question. So by the time you get to stage four, you're in what's known as the self-authoring mind. And this is when you start to question things that you have been told. So I was told this had to happen. This was the only way. This was the only uh, thing. Then, then if you're in the self-authoring mind, then you start to question those. Now, what I'm not talking about is anti-vaxxers. Uh, anti-vaxxers and, and conspiracy theorists have all these questions and like, oh, who's not telling us that? But actually, they've just found their own little tribe that they, they question these things. In this, this is you looking at everything and how it fits with your world and think, is this right? So you are self-authorship. You can be the person you want to be, which is within a society, but you don't fully agree with everything in that society. You can have multiple role con con consciousness. So I'm a coach, I'm a presenter, I'm a master, I'm a partner, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm all of these different things, stepfather, and I'm okay with all of those things, uh, but they have slightly different impacts on my life in different ways. A couple of weeks back, me and my uh, partner stroke boy went to uh, my parents. And at that point, we had to not be master and slave. We had to just be partners. And that was quite weird in some ways. But at the same time, we were able to do this. We made our own meaning than that. Now, going from stage four to stage five, um, Keegan gives the example of uh, this uh, being a little bit like stage four. In stage four, there are two, and if, if you're looking at this picture, most people have seen this, there are two pictures. Uh, there's an old woman and there's a young woman. And they're actually, you can't see them both. I mean, you can see that, you know, physically there's, there's lines on the paper, but they aren't anything to do with each other. They're, they're actually contradicting each other. That if you're looking at the young woman, you're not looking at the old woman. If on the other hand, you look, especially at the back of this picture by Escher, the, the black and the white figures make each other. You cannot have the white without the black. They don't contradict each other. They are both there at the same time. And in stage five, you are multiple beings at once. And I always think that the, the real key to stage five is contradiction and paradox. I've had people coming to me uh, in the past for my coaching and they say, I, 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 I feel very conflicted because I'm, I like this and I like this and I can't 
integrate them. And so what they try to do is to put them in a bigger bubble. So they say, um, okay, so this, uh, me, me being a, a leader and me being a submissive don't work together. So therefore, I need to find a bigger bubble. This is about service and uh, or um, and therefore when I'm leading, I'm serving people and you put them together in a bigger bubble and you feel happy and, and, and com comfortable with that. In stage five, you could have completely opposite views and be really comfortable with the fact that they are completely in uh, contradiction to each other. So an example would be, you could be absolutely 100% convinced that every woman has the right to complete self-determination of her body and that she has the choice to have an, uh, an abortion or not. But you could also completely at the same time fully 100% believe that no human being has the right to kill another human being or potential human being so therefore be completely against abortion so you could hold those two things know that they never quite meet and be comfortable with that and that is you can do this on multiple levels in stage five and you're very very happy with that you recognize where you've come from you recognize that some of your uh, beliefs and your values and everything comes from the society i will never not be a white man who's grown up in in britain uh, you know in a, a sort of anglo-saxon protestant catholic world with all of those uh, backgrounds to me but at the same time I could potentially go, well, actually, you know what, I'm going to pick this bit from Buddhism, and I'm going to pick this bit from communism, and I'm going to pick this bit from capitalism, and make them all me, and they will all exist together. Now, when you first hear about this, it sounds completely paradoxical, and it sounds like you're going schizophrenic. Um, and that's sort of the point, is that if you're thinking that, then you're not in stage five, because stage five is when you're just you, and you make you as a being with these multiple parts. Now, as I said, I haven't really said anything about how you can use this in yourself. For next week, it would be useful if you have a think about which stage you might be at. Most adults are in three, four and five, very, very few in five. So it's three or four for most people. Um, go to my website, linktoleathermaster.com forward slash mastering hyphen life hyphen shorts, download the worksheet, this is not empirical. This is not the, the, the Keegan model of, of, of actually working this out. Normally, it takes very protracted interviews with people. This is very rough and ready. I just put, put this together myself to help you think about which stage you might be at. And then maybe when you're looking at that as well, you think about a few other people, whether you're thinking about your, your, uh, the people you live with or that you love or the people you work with or your family. And then uh, next week, we'll be looking at what this theory means in practice and where we can go to it. The one thing I will say is, please don't try to be level five because you are not level five if you're trying to be level five. You're actually level three because what you're doing is you're saying, well, I will look better if I'm level five, which is all about the other people and nothing to do with you. So next week, using Keegan, Join me and uh, we'll find out how on earth we can use this very in-depth theory to make our lives better. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.